The question of who is the most powerful Sith has persisted throughout Star Wars. Various sources have emerged to challenge and question who's stronger, from Knights of the Old Republic characters like Revan or Darth Nihilus to movies like Darth Vader or Emperor Palpatine. Galen Merrick, also known as Star Killer, was the strongest protagonist. Why do you believe he's the strongest? Can he match Darth Vader's power? Let's find out. Welcome to Star Wars Empire. And before we begin, please like and subscribe to our videos to receive updates. Starting us off, let's have an overview of Star Killer. Galen Merrick, codenamed Star Killer, was a Force-sensitive human male assassin of the Sith Order and Galactic Empire agent as Darth Vader's secret apprentice. Merrick was the son of two Jedi Knights, Kento and Mally Merrick, and was born in the aftermath of the Clone Wars on the Wookiee homeworld of Kashyyyk. Following his mother's death, Kashyyyk was invaded by the Imperial military as a target of the Great Jedi Purge, and Kento was confronted and slain in a lightsaber duel by the Dark Lord of the Sith, who also happened to discover the fugitive Jedi son. Vader abducted and eventually raised Merrick, who became Star Killer, to embrace the dark side of the Force after assessing the orphan's raw force strength. Merrick forgot his past and even his birth name after being taken from his home as a child by the Dark Lord. Though trained in the ways of the Order of the Sith Lords, the rule of two stated that only two Sith could exist simultaneously, so Starkiller could not consider himself a true Sith while his master was still an apprentice to Darth Sidious. Next, Starkiller had vast knowledge in various lightsaber combat technique. Merrick was familiar enough with all seven types of lightsaber combat to recognize them in his opponent's style and technique and exploit their flaws. He specializes in Form 7 Chuyu, Form 5 Shen, and Form 3 Soresu. He was also competent in Form 6 Neiman, demonstrating great skill in combining force attacks with his combat style, and Form 4 Ataru, incorporating aspects of the form into his combat style. His use of Chuyo was intense and aggressive. His style randomized and unpredictable, laced with unexpected force-based attacks amid complex lightsaber sequences. His focus and concentration enabled him to defeat opponents through sheer tenacity, but it also caused him to ignore his surroundings, leaving him vulnerable to attacks from other directions. When put on the defensive, he would resort to his Zerosu practice. Merrick's Form 3 skills were mostly self-taught, having learned them by imitating Proxy's Obi-Wan Kenobi combat module. Merrick's Zerosu prowess was exceptional despite his lack of formal training. Merrick's ability to hold off Kota's Juyo frenzy long enough to tire out the Jedi was demonstrated during his duel with Ram Kota. He also used this technique effectively during his duel with Darth Vader, easily deflecting his overconfident opponent's ferocious yet significantly well-executed attacks without issue to wear Vader out and then quickly counterattack. Merrick was also able to defend himself against other aggressive duelists such as Kazdan Paradis and Merrick's Brood, ultimately defeating them. Merrick was also an expert in the use of Shin, favoring the unusual reverse script of the form. Moving on, Galen was well equipped with disguises. Merrick was given a fully stocked wardrobe when he was assigned his new mission to find the Rebel Alliance. His color palette was mostly limited to black or brown, depending on whether he was representing the Sith or the Jedi, though he did have other outfits. Darth Vader provided him with a heavy Sith robe with light armor plates and large flowing black cape for the mission. The Jedi Adventure Robe, which he wore during the Corellian Treaty and continued to wear during his assault of the Death Star, was one of his most notable Jedi-inspired garments. Merrick's Bounty Hunter disguise had a strong Mandalorian influence, especially in the brace plate and vamp braces. His Corellian flight suit was mostly green, with a single bare metal pauldron on the right shoulder. During his second visit to Felucia, he wore jungle combat gear inspired by ancient Masasi armor. The Industrial Explorer outfit he wore during his second visit to Rax's Prime appeared to be standard issue hazardous environment protective wear. Following that, Galen was always equipped with lightsaber crystals. Darth Vader supplied Merrick with a set of red synth crystals from his original crystals. He preferred the color because it reminded him of blood and fire during his meditations, strengthening his connection to the dark side. His original lightsaber destroyed these crystals. Galen was bothered by the green crystals in Kota's lightsaber, which interfered with his concentration during meditation and constantly reminded him of the lightsaber's previous owner. He discovered that the aqua crystals in the father's lightsaber were much more appealing to him, as they had superior optical qualities and the blade itself was slightly easier to handle. He noticed that the blue reminded him of oceans and rain rather than the more violent imagery evoked by his red lightsaber blade, but this didn't bother him too much. 
Despite this, he hoped that when the time came to build a new Sith lightsaber, Vader would provide him with a new set of red crystals. In addition to these crystals, Kaelin had crystals of various colors including yellow, gold, and purple, all in compressed and unstable forms, indicating that they were synthetic in origin. He also possessed a rare crystal that produced a black bay. Next, Starkiller rips an Imperial Star Destroyer out of orbit. The Force is always shown brightest in games, where it has been purposefully baked into the gameplay as a spectacular way to keep players' attention. That's why, in The Force Unleashed, the moment Starkiller rips an Imperial Star Destroyer out of orbit remains my favorite use of the Force in the entire Star Wars universe, be it films, games, or the endless TV series. It earns triumphant and makes the Force feel like any other galaxy power. Starkiller is, without a doubt, one of the most powerful Force users in the Star Wars universe. Vader's harsh training accentuated the boy's exceptional natural talent. He can shoot lightning from his fingertips and perform the cool force repulse move. But pulling an Imperial Star Destroyer out of the sky and crashing it into Rax's prime is another level. To put the sheer size of those things into perspective, one casts a shadow that dwarfs an entire town in Rogue One. Director Gareth Edwards is a master of scale, as evidenced by monsters and Godzilla. For the first time in Star Wars history, he demonstrated how enormous and terrifying Imperial Star Destroyers truly are. Wrestling with the analog sticks and seeing Starkiller clench his fists, putting his all into bringing the spaceship down while Kota yells, pull it out of the sky, is a memory I've had since I first played the game nearly 15 years ago. Moving on, Power of the Force. It looms large in the center of the screen, taunting you as the TIE fighters scream through the air and strafe you, gradually tilting towards the planet as you bring it down with your willpower alone. Until the Force unleashed, the biggest thing would seen a Jedi lift was an X-Wing out of a swamp, and even that was done slowly by Master Yoda. It's like comparing a pebble thrower to a strongman hurling a boulder. It makes all the other Jedi look bad. It's not just a great moment in terms of spectacle, it's also an important part of Starkiller's journey. He finds a mentor in General Kota, a Jedi Master he blinded earlier in the game after being betrayed by Vader. Kota tells him that the size of the Star Destroyer is unimportant. All he has to do is the Force to reach out to it. It's a fantastic lesson, emphasizing how much the Force is about mindset and willpower rather than physical strength. It's also a highly symbolic moment. Star Wars has always been a story about how individuals can influence the fate of an entire galaxy. Anakin creates the Empire, Luke dismantles it, and Rey nearly proves that you don't need FEMA's parents to make an impact. Almost. The best rallying cry the Rebellion could have is Stark Killer bringing down the Empire's greatest symbol of dominance and oppression, the awe-inspiring and fear-inducing Imperial Star Destroyer. With that guy on your side, anything is possible, including the demise of an Empire. Following that, Merrick infiltrate the Dark Star. Galen Merrick, formerly known by the codename Stark Killer, now identifies as a Jedi for the first time after rejecting the alias Darth Vader gave him as an apprentice. Galen decided to save the Rebel Alliance by finding Vader and the Senators, so he meditated to see if he could get a vision from the Force. Though successful, he was almost paralyzed by the sheer number of potential outcomes. Paying attention to a consistent feature allowed him to pinpoint the Rebel's hideout, the unfinished Death Star. To use the Rogue Shadow's cloaking device to get close to the massive battle station in the Horus system and breathe the thin air provided for the enslaved people and workers on the construction crew. The final words between Galen and Juno were spoken as they stood on the Shadow's open boarding ramp. After being asked if he would make it through the rescue attempt, Galen reluctantly admitted that he probably wouldn't. Juno rushed forward and gave him a passionate kiss, confident that she would never have to face the consequences of her actions. When Juno suddenly embraced Galen, he was taken aback but quickly returned the affection. With a final kiss, Galen said goodbye and jumped into the vast Death Star superstructure. Finally, Galen has a mighty duel with his former master, Darth Vader. Security apprehended him as he ran toward the observation dome. Darth Vader emerged from the dome wielding a lightsaber. Vader stated that while he had trained Galen well, he still had a lot to teach him. Galen responded that Vader had no more lessons for him. Vader began with a double strike, confident that he would defeat Galen. Galen was taken aback by the blow, which jarred his wrists and shoulders and nearly disarmed him. He stabbed the Dark Lord's abdomen, dodging two vicious slashes before flicking his blade up to pierce Vader's throat. Vader barely obstructed the combatants. Galen realized he and Vader had never fought in equal terms because he had either capitulated or held back during training. While evading Vader's attack, 
He taunted him. He made fun of his former master, knowing that while Galen had eluded Vader, Vader couldn't elude Sidious. Galen's self-taught Ceresu transformed Vader's death blows into superficial burns with little energy. Galen used Force Lightning to counter Vader's relentless attacks, forcing him to defend for the first time. Galen moved forward while Vader retreated. After discovering a weakness in Vader's defenses, Galen slashed his throat. Surprised but pleased, Galen struck the Dark Lord twice more before telekinetically pummeling Vader with whatever he could find. Vader destroyed the last energy field generator missile. The blast obliterated the Sith Lord's mask, helmet, and respirator. When Vader's face was revealed, Galen approached his former master to kill him. Galen was taken aback by Vader, a scarred older man who only saw pain and exhaustion. So that marks the end of today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Do you think that there are anyone stronger and well-equipped than the infamous Star Killer? Please let us know in the comments section down below.